am technically challenged, so this is a big feat. Um, I know that Brett is, we talked before, and he has never used Skype before. He loaded it just for this chat. We're in the same boat, then. <laughs> Hello. We only talked to our nieces. <laughs> Hello. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Brett? No? I can see you. Oh, okay. You can see me. Is that you, Brett? We've got you. Houston. Yeah, you got me. Um, Houston, we have liftoff. Now, if only I could figure out how to get you all on the screen. Um, so say hello. Um, Brett, meet our international group. Uh, guys, introduce yourselves. Uh, tell Brett where you're from and how you see a place to call home. Ryan, start with you. Hey, I'm, I'm from Methuen, Massachusetts, near Boston, and I use... Uh, I see it through Acorn, Acorn TV. Okay. Uh, Carolyn? Yeah, hi, Brett. I'm Carolyn from Los Angeles, and I also watch it on Acorn. <laughs> uh, um, Brett, next year, Amber and Autumn, um, they uh, are here in Staten Island, and they have a fabulous... Uh, a uh, page of your own called the Silver Petticoat Review that does marvelous um, uh, stories and recaps, all kinds of things on period drama. So say hello. Hi, hello. I'm I'm Amber. This is I'm Autumn. <laughs> yeah, we're from we probably live here in New York City, but we're actually from Arizona, so. and uh, we watch Acorn. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness for Acorn. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. And uh, Diane, say hello to Brett. Hi, uh, I'm from the Netherlands, and I watch it on DVD and through BBC. And uh, when it's on the Netherlands, uh, I watch it on. Uh, I'm not. On I'm not hearing Diane. Uh, Diane, can you turn up your? Oh dear. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I'm almost you. hearing you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah, you're very low. Hi, Diane. You're very, very low. I can always, I can hardly hear you. But um. Okay, I will uh, find uh, how to do. Uh... <laughs> <coughs> okay. Um. All right. Well, while while we f uh, figure out these technical things, um, Brett, I want to thank you for um joining us. Uh. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about the group, I know you, you're familiar with us. We are about to uh, hit 5,000 members from all over the world. Um, I, we did a poll recently, and I think we had uh, over 40 countries that are regularly watching out of the 144. Um, it's a great group there. Uh, committed to the show, they uh, watch it and uh, talk about it from season to season, uh, mm -hmm. and um, they're, they're, they've got a lot of questions. So I can't see well, you yet, but let's start with Carolyn. Okay. Um, okay, I guess I'll, I'll start. <laughs> yeah, please. Okay. Um, Right, you've said. I, I think I read an interview recently where you said that you're gonna that you're more selective with some of the roles. I guess you would say, given that you have this regular gig with the place to call home. I'm just wondering if there's any other type of genre that you would like to play that that you haven't yet. Uh, um, I suppose uh, you know, coming off this, it'd be quite nice to do something. Um, you know, something contemporary. Um, uh, as far as genre goes, uh, look, I, I, I've sort of covered a, a few over the years, I suppose. Um, it really, I, 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 I sort of make choices pretty much on, on, on the role, I think, and, 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 and obviously the script. Um, and if it happens to be a, 
a genre that, that, that I have or haven't played in before. Um, but it really is more about, I suppose these days, it's about a director and it's about the script. Um, uh, I mean, I, you know, my wife always says that she'd like to see me do some comedy. Um, I, obviously do, I obviously do things late at night that, that um, you know, she finds. But um, yeah, I suppose that's, that's one area that I really haven't, 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 haven't popped into, I suppose. Yeah. Except for maybe theatre when I was sort of doing some Mel Coward or whatever and some Alan Bennett a few years ago. Um, yeah. Um, Brett, um, I can't see you guys, um, so this is like radio for me. Um, but, can, I, uh, can I do something at my end, do you think, Susan, to try and get my image? or? Um, I cannot see anybody except myself. Yeah, um, I, think, I think Brett needs to turn his camera on. If he, that's the problem. Uh, so I thought I had it on, but um, yeah. Brett, when we spoke before, um, you had look on the bottom. There should be a camera icon. Uh, click on that. Goodness me! Sorry about this. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, it, Brett, we know it worked because we did it before. Yeah, I know. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can. I've got you there. You see me? Okay. Ah, now I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a gentleman with glasses. That's me. I see bread. Oh, you can okay. see me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Listen, um, we, yeah, we see you. Okay, uh, this is what I, oh. um, I'm going to have to do. I'm going to leave you guys to talk. Take this yourself for the next few minutes. I'm going to have to sign out and come back on to the conversation. Okay? Uh, okay, so carry on. I have, okay. Um, I just had one follow-up question, Brett. This is Carolyn again. Um, Bevan Lee is such a fantastic writer, and you say you're going to obviously choose other roles based on the writer, and I think that'll be hard given... He's so great. Um, are there, there are moments in the show where a lot, where sometimes it's not the words, it's just the looks or uh, the faces that you guys make? Are those, instead of dialogue, are those written into the script as well, or is that something that kind of happens while you're just shooting the show? Uh, that that really is um, adhering to Bevan's, because it's, it's, it's incredibly reductive the way that he writes, you know, in this sort of this melodrama genre, um, the only words we have, and we never improvise, and you've probably heard that before, but we, we can't improvise. There is such a style to the, to the dialogue. Um, there's no fat to the dialogue. There's nothing extraneous. So the looks you're talking about, um, I think the, the more comfortable we've become with, with the show and with ha knowing how to play it, I think, I think that those looks um, just come out of knowing and, and knowing the genre, I think, a bit better, um, and uh, um, and honouring honouring the pause. I think um, he certainly writes. He's very definite about the pausing. Um, that's 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 in the script. Um, but I think a, a lot of it, I suppose, is also just our choice as actors to to play with that. And, and more, the more I think that you work with each other, you you know what those rhythms are, um, and you know when a you know when a look is is valuable, or when a um, uh, but is the it is also the nature of television of you know that that quite often you know at the end of a scene there is you do cut to you know but that's not, I don't think that's what you're talking about I think you're actually talking about more the the pauses within the scene and the looks within the scene the glances within the scene and that's pretty much up to us it's obviously a you know you do rely on your directors a lot there as well um, because you don't want to you don't want to overdo that. Then it becomes, you know, um, a, a type of drama that you know it can almost fall at, maybe into sort of more um, soap territory. Then I think you've got to be careful of that. Does that does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's 
done, it's done really well. It's done really well. Yeah. I think there's a degree of subtlety about what we try to achieve on screen. Um, and, and, and quite often that subtlety can be achieved with less dialogue. Uh, Fred, um, can you tell, uh, tell us a little bit about the process um, from the time you get the script, your first table read, until you get uh, a show in the can? So we receive a script probably um, two, three months prior to shooting. Um, and obviously, you know, if that's the first one of the of the series, then we're not working on anything else. We just devote ourselves to the to the two hours of TV that we have on on the page. But then, once we roll into it, um, we're receiving the new scripts about two to three weeks beforehand. We're we're shooting. We're up and running. We're shooting. We 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 shoot roughly two hours, two episodes over the course of three weeks. Um, and and it's a process of once you have the script. What I do. I read it. I read it a couple of times. I familiarise myself with 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 what it's saying, with what it's trying to say. Um, there is uh, rehearsal. The pro our rehearsal process is very much sitting around a table. So in between our shooting days, we'll have an afternoon off. We'll go into the office. We'll sit down with our director, the new director, of course, um, because we have a different director for each um, for each block of. Of, of, of what we call a block is two hours, two episodes of television. Um, and it's really a matter of just going through anything that you feel isn't working for you on the page. Um, uh, so our rehearsals are really more about getting the, the script right more than performance. Um, uh, and um, yeah, so that's the, that's sort of the thing. So for me, and, and, and learning the lines is really the last part of it, I think. It's, it's understanding the work helps you to learn it, um, and uh, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, and you allow a little bit of room, you know, you, you know as I said earlier, there is still, there's no room for improvising in, in the style that we, we play, but it is always nice to arrive on set not knowing exactly, you know, what you're going to do, because I think that, that element of, of, um, of uh, not so much surprise, but you know, you block something too heavily and you feel like you're in a straight, straight jacket. Um, and it's nice to have a little bit of room to move. Um, uh, I just want to ask one more question about, uh, um, is your, I don't know, I know that Australia is huge. Um, and that, so do you live in the area or do you have to uproot your life for the filming season? So I live on the east coast of, of Australia. I live in Melbourne, and uh, we we shoot in Sydney. And so I occasionally um, have a little pad in Sydney. So when I work there, uh, our studio is uh, Central Sydney. Um, and the location, however, is about an hour out of town, southwest, in a in a township called Camden, um, uh, the Southern Highlands. So. Uh, and the ratio, I, in my mind, our ratio uh, of, of studio to location, I think we're probably sitting at about 60 location, 40 studio. Um, I mean, I'm, you know, in, in, in better, you know, if our budget allows, I think we'd probably like to push that to sort of 70, 30. But that's what that's what really jacks up our the cost of our show. I know in American terms, I'm sure 1.5 mil an episode probably is not much, but. But for our, for our over over here, it's that's a lot of money, um, and a, a lot of it goes because the, the fact that it is period drama, and we are on location so much. Uh, but Brett, in, a, show, yeah. in America, we have people who get paid tens of million just to perform in a show every week. I think that's just the caterer. <laughs> exactly, 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 exactly. Uh, um, I dream. I've got a dream about that. <laughs> it could, money it could, no, it could that. happen. I know. Too much money, just too much, too much. Um, uh, Diane, Diane, say hello to Brett. I know you've been looking forward to meeting him. That's true. I, ho I hope you can hear me now. Yeah, just. I can see, yes. I can see you. Okay. There. Hello. Uh, hi. We haven't seen each uh, other for a long time. Yes. Uh, 
from all the Dutch fans, uh, especially from my grandmother. She's uh, almost uh, 84 years old and a big fan of a place to call home. Uh, just like my daughter and my mother too. So uh, four generations are waiting for season five here to start, which won't be around uh, August next year. So we have to be uh, very patient. Uh, a question. Uh, on social media, there are often uh, comments about George being weak, that he makes the wrong decisions. How do you see George? What sort of man do you think he is? I have to apologise. I missed a look. I think I may have got the. I think I may have got the meaning of the question. But would you mind just repeating it for me? Sorry. Uh, well, uh, on social media, there are often comments about George being weak and that he makes the wrong decisions. How do you oh, see? being weak. Yeah. Uh, what sort of man do you think he is? No, I don't. Um, uh, and I'm certainly not offended by 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 those comments. I I get them myself. Um, if people are brave enough, they actually ask me that in the street. Um, I, I think that I think to play sense, uh, to play a true gentleman um, on screen and a man that wants to please everybody, which he does, um, that's not an easy thing to do. So I actually see, in a way, that's his. That I, I think that it takes a lot of strength to to try and please and to try and smooth the water for everybody and. And that's, I've always seen that playing the gentleman isn't always the easiest thing to do. Um, and as an actor, it's not always easy either. But I, I honour what Bevan created and, and I will always play George that way. I mean, we, we do see moments where he rises above and he, he asserts himself and whatever. But essentially, we can't forget that this, this is a drama, really. It's not a love story between George and, and, um, and Sarah. It's actually a friendship story between Sarah and Elizabeth. And I think, and I don't mind saying this, but for us males in the team, we really do, we try our best to support the really strong females. And, and that's what first drew me to the project because I've never seen such strong female roles, on, on so well-defined female roles on page before. And I, I often joke that, you know, we, male actors know our place in the show and, and we do, we are there to serve a purpose and, and that's the nature of, 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 of what Bevan has written and, and that's what I play. Um, so I hope that, does that answer the question? Yeah, thank you. Um, David, do you hear a t uh, some kind of interference? Um, Brett, I'm, hearing, to... I'm hearing a lot of interference. Yeah. Uh, Brian's mic or something. Oh, Brian? If you could just Brian? Mic. No. Brian? Oh. Sorry. Oh, now I really miss everything up. Uh, All I'll, right. turn my mic. I'll turn my mic off. Make sure it's off. Okay. Uh, it, okay, everybody back. All right, um, Brett, um, I noticed that um, you have a real, uh, you know, Diane said some people see George as weak. Um, in the ep new episodes that I've seen, um, George is not weak. I think he's got a challenge now and he's rising to the challenge. You and Jenny have such a, you guys are great together. Um, can you talk, and you've worked with a lot of wonderful women in the past, Nicole Kidman and a lot of other people. How is it that as an actor you can capture that kind of magic? You can't always do it, but you, uh, you two obviously have it. How does it Look, happen? it really is, you know, I, I use the word rhythm, you know, quite often describing performances, and I think particularly in film and television, as opposed to theatre where you really do, you really can put a mask on, and um, whereas with, with, with film and television, there's a degree of subtlety, and it, it, it depends on someone's rhythm, and you can't, you can't always change that rhythm. It's inherent in you, and, and when two people come together on set and those rhythms are complementary, 
Um, it's, it's, I suppose you could call it acting styles. I don't know, but it's more, it's more about just one's manners, I think. And, 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 and sometimes it's so complimentary, you just don't even have to work at it. Um, mm -hmm. And it just, it's just a nice whatever you do or whatever Jenny does, I know. And, and we just, we have that under, unspoken understanding. And, um, but that, you know, and that's just a, look, what can I say? It's, um, uh, it's a real joy to work with her. I, I, I love her. I think she's one of the, the, uh, the kindest and um, um, uh, supportive women to work with. Um, always beautifully prepared and, and, but also a sense of fun. And so even though this, the scenes can be fairly tense and we've had a few of those, there's always a, there's never any pressure with Jenny. And, 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 and yeah, we, we sort of, yeah, we just, we just, uh, it's a pity that, you know, some of those scenes are, are so horrendous because um, uh, it's there. But having said that, they're actually easy to do with her because, as I say, she's, um, our, our, our rhythms just are in balance. They are. They are indeed. Um, uh, and sometimes you have to work at it. You know, sometimes there's more acting involved than, than, than other times. Um, yeah, but it's, it, but it's nice when you don't have to sort of try so hard, yeah. Are you uh, drawn to the period? Actually, sorry, can I, can okay. I interrupt you, Sue? I actually have a lot of people that say to me, oh, gee, you know, um, they look so nice together on screen. What a pity that, you know, Regina had to be Regina and, and all that sort of business. Of course, Jenny's always joking that um, <laughs> she'd like to be <laughs> Regina to sort of turn a new leaf and all that sort of business. <laughs> um, George, uh, all the characters had gone through, you know, we're now into season five and we see how everyone has evolved and how the families have evolved. How did you see George when you first saw him on the page and how do you see him now? Uh... Goodness, I always saw him as a man that, that, you know, some of the weakness perhaps that we're referring to is, is um, the fact that, that he follows his heart. And, and um, is that a weakness? Um, possibly the, you know, the consequences aren't always, haven't always been terrific for him. Um, so I suppose um, it was maybe, you know, in the last couple of seasons where as you said earlier, you know, he finds a direction for himself. He, he, uh, you know, he, he, he hops into politics um, as a way to define himself, I suppose, outside of the Bly empire uh, and also away from, from, from Sarah um, to try and find himself. I hope that's what we've done and I hope that's what we've done recently and I think what you'll get to see coming up, I think we see that he does find a voice for himself. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I've enjoyed the journey. I, you know, even in the beginning when, when it was, you know, he's being torn between, you know, his mother and, and, and his, you know, the woman that he loved. And, you know, I had no problem with that. I enjoyed playing that. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm very much one of those actors that, that um, I'm not in charge of his destiny. And I often say to Bevan, you know, I might ring him and say, look, what do you, how do you, how do you see that? How do you think I should play this? Because I'm not the writer, you know, I love being an actor and I, 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 I respect what we all do in our profession and I, I don't want to step over boundaries. And, and so whatever course he provides for me to play, I'm, I'm just happy to play it. Not to say that, that at times I, I might look at something else or not so much wish for something else, uh, but, but um, you know, I like not controlling that journey. Um, and uh, um, I, like, I like my input into, into the production. I, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm an actor, that's it. And, and, um, uh, uh, and uh, you know, and his work, his words serve me very well. Um, yeah, so, but you know, there's always talk. I, I remember in the second season, we were talking about, you know, trying to, you know, I, particularly male directors would come on and, and you know, they not the female directors, but the male directors would come on and say, oh, we, 
really want to see, we want to sort of beef him up. We really want to ask, you know, I'm pretty happy. I'm, I'm okay. You might want to beef him up because maybe that's not the man that you or that, you know, you wouldn't, your, that may not be your ideal of, 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 a, of a man on TV, but I'm okay with it. You know, I set out to play a gentle man. I set out to, 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 to play something I hadn't seen on television myself for a long time. And, and the, you know, the, you know, the actors that I used to respond to were the Sam Neills and, and the John Hargraves, a, a very, very fine actor mm. that Australia had and we no longer have. But he was, he was re a leading, leading film actor and theatre, but particularly film in the 70s and early 80s. And they sort of embodied a, a different type of, you know, male to what we see on our screens now. You know, there was a gentleness, there was a sensitivity, not afraid to be that. There was something manly about that back then, whereas now, you know, to play that, uh, it's, it's, it's a rarity to find a role like George, I think, these days, and that's why I relish playing it. And I, so, I, I, you know, and I, I've got nothing against our male directors. They're fantastic. <laughs> Um, you know, it's it's interesting that the the, 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 the our, our wonderful female directors really embrace what 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 we try to do with George, whereas the males want to sort of beef him up, and I, I, I find that that's interesting. That says quite a lot about perhaps how we feel our our own masculine masculinity is. I think. Oh, I waffled on there. I do apologise. No, uh, um, you know, I as I shared with you before. I did not know who you were until I saw that very first episode of A Place to Call Home on Acorn and got hooked. But uh, as I've gotten to know you over these years, I kind of got curious and did a little Googling and have started to watch uh, some of your past work. You have such a long career in such a big body of successful work. Um, Kudos, we all you're enjoy being, you're it. Being, you're being very kind. You are being very kind. <laughs> um, can you share with us, um, uh, you know, a capsule version of what your life as an actor have been, has been since you were? I think I, you are first. You started working when you were a teenager. Um, yes, I, I don't or think I, I. I found um, I was struggling at school. I. I had no interest in being at school uh, for whatever reason, and this is very unlike me, and I wouldn't think of doing it then. But I enrolled in the in the school debating team, and it used to terrify me. But somehow I got through it. My mother saw that I had an interest in this. She saw I didn't have an interest in 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 school. She enrolled me into a drama workshop at the Opera House and uh, in Sydney, and. Um, I went along there, it was kids' workshop, but I went along and they were playing with video cameras. It was not, not about getting up in front of people and performing, it was more the, it was more this sort of thing they were doing with video cameras and we'd put little scenes together and one of the kids one day said, oh, I'm going off to an audition for a TV commercial. And, uh, and I said, oh, how do you, oh, you need to get an agent. And that following week, without my mother, because at the time, uh, uh, that's another story, but we might, anyway, my mum, I didn't tell my mum and I took three days off school, went into the city. I just had a little shot of myself and I went round to some agencies and I just knocked on doors. Uh, someone took me on. Um, the following week I went for a casting for a tele TV commercial, paid X amount of money. I then told my mother this is what I've done. And I, But before you get angry, mum, this is what I'm going to get paid. And... Uh, Honestly, uh, Susan, that, you know, that just led to more work. Um, I convinced my parents that, um, my mother, that, that I could make a go of this. And I think I was probably about 17. Um, and fortunately, then I landed a, uh, there was a very high rating uh, serial here called Sons and Daughters. And I <laughs> landed a role in that. Um and I then procured, got myself a much better agent, an agent than whom I'm with now, Robin Gardner. And, uh, and she said, oh, look, you know, I like you doing this for three months, but then I'm going to take you out of that. And then we're going to start being a little bit more discerning about what we do. And um, so then um, there was, uh, Australia was producing through a company called um, Kennedy Miller, 
and the Miller being George Miller of Babe and, and um, mm. Mad Max fame. Uh, he, they had a, created a, a TV company, a production company, making a lot of really very good miniseries. And I, fortunately, I managed to do um, a miniseries called Vietnam that was very well received. And, and um, uh, you know, that somewhat, and then um, I, uh, so there was film work and miniseries work and whatever, but then TV came along again in the form of a show called The Country Practice, which once again was a top rating um, series here, a much loved series. And I do remember the reason for me taking that, apart from the fact that it was a great show and I wanted to be part of it, I'd actually just met my, I don't mind saying this, I just met my, my now wife. And I remember just wanting to create stability and, and I thought what better way to do it than to hop into TV and get paid for it the contract was X amount of a couple of years or whatever. And I, I remember then just feeling um, I was making the career work for me in a way. And that, um, yeah, so it was sort of a calculated decision to do that. I mean, I could have maybe not done a country practice and I don't know where I would have ended up. Perhaps I, I'd be in America with now. I don't know. But, <laughs> but, um, uh, but no, look, it, it did very well for me and and uh, but once again my agent suggested i only stayed there for a certain period of time it seems longer people think it was longer but it was only just under two years and i for you know for for then i went to the flying doctors um <laughs> and uh part of my reason for making that choice is because i actually all had always loved the city of melbourne and this provided me an opportunity to live in a city that i loved so uh and i've been in melbourne pretty much ever since um and uh, so I don't know. It's nice to think that your work can help out your personal life, which, which, um, which it kind of did. Um, and then the roles after that, pretty much, um, I didn't have to think too much about it. And I think when you're an actor in your twenties and early thirties, uh, at least in this country, uh, and if you're not, you know, shot to, you know, to serious, whatever you want to call it stardom, fame, whatever, which I wasn't, and I'm quite honest about that. And the shows that I did, the country practice flying doctors, they were big in our country and they certainly sold into Europe, but they weren't going to sort of open doors for me in London or in, in Germany or, or anything like that. Um, um, as I say, they, were, they weren't sort of home and away or neighbours. I don't, So I'm probably talking about shows that you guys don't get, and so I do apologise. Oh, uh, Brett... I'd never heard of any of them until two years ago, and now I've seen most of them. I yeah. know all about your flying doctor days and all these uh, all these uh, 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 other incredible shows. You really have achieved what I think should be a dream of the actor, and that is to stay consistently employed. And uh, but there, I have to, I do have to, I do have to correct you on that because. Uh, I was just about to say to you that the roles just came and I didn't think too much about it. I just expected life would go on. And then when I was probably sort of early 40s, mid 40s, that um, my age, that um, things just didn't happen. All of a sudden, um, I don't know what it was. I, I it was it was odd, and and um, and I had to. It was a very um, it was a it was an interesting time for me because I had to. It was a great experience in a way, as lousy as it sounds. It was actually interesting because I had to define myself by something more than what I did. And and I think as males we we and perhaps females, but I think females are better at not doing this. But as as guys, I think we what we do for a living really defines who we are. And I, I felt adrift for a couple of years really. And a few people around me, family, said, "Look, we understand it must be whatever, but you're so much, you're so many other things. You know, you're a you're a son, you're a husband, you're a brother. You're you know, it sounds cliched and trite, but I think it was a, it was an interesting lesson for me. Um, I took time out, and 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 then I actually made a decision because I kind of felt like the business had fallen out of love with me, and I was almost falling out of love with the business, and I didn't want that to happen, so I took myself out of it." And I, I didn't audition. I didn't want to audition. I, I didn't want to be. I, I honestly wanted 
to just have a break from it because it, uh, it was, I, I wasn't enjoying where it was going. And I thought I, I never wanted to be one of the, an actor that's bitter about the experience because it's always a choice for you to do it. And, 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 it's, and, it, and then it's a choice for you not to do it. Um, so it was a, honestly, it was, it was probably about, goodness me, going on a year. And, um, and I kept myself busy, but it, I certainly wasn't acting. Um, and I got a call um, from my agent about a place to call home. And I hadn't read anything. I didn't want to read anything. They said, look, you know, it's the new drama here. You should read it. We think it's terrific. And I read, I didn't want to read it because I didn't want to get interested in disappointment, whatever. I read it and I, I was just, it, it was extraordinary. I'd never, I hadn't read anything with the largesse, with the, the finesse, with the quality, with the, the big picture stuff. I'd never read anything like this. And I certainly didn't think that Australian television could produce it, particularly a commercial network. Um, so I called my, I said, of course I love it, but, it, you know, this person's going to get it, this person's going to get it, you know. It was that good. I thought the role was that good. Anyway, one thing led to it. I auditioned for it. You invest in it. And because I almost I kind of thought I could play this role. I, I knew George. I, I knew George. And you don't often, as an actor, you don't often find that. I, I just knew I could play him. So I auditioned and there was nothing, absolutely nothing. And I, you know, after two weeks, I called my agent and I said, I said, no, no, they've moved on, they're, you know. And I was like, okay, well, see, that's why I didn't want to audition. Forget it now, I'm, I'm. And uh, probably a month later, a month and a half later, another call from my agent, they suddenly want to fly me up to Sydney from Melbourne for an audition for this. And I said, are you kidding? I mean, I didn't even get a call back. What, what's happened now? And um, no, really, it, it, it's... I, I, look, I really don't think I want to invest in this. I don't want, I've already been disappointed once. It's going to happen again, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, obviously flew up um, and, uh, you know, yeah, I got the role. So so prior to this role, I, 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 it was very quiet for me. And, and so it was, an, it was lovely to, 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 to get this thing, to, to play this, this wonderful character. But also I came back into it, I think, a, a better person because I really cherish working and I very much cherish the quality. Um, and and I'm, I remember I, I made a pact. I, I said it to, to, to Michelle. I said, look, um, I'm never going to complain about a, an early call time, about late finishes. I'm not going to because I know what it's like not to do this. And, um, and uh, hopefully... If, uh, some of my cast members see this, they'll probably say, oh, he's obviously, he, I've heard him complain, but, I, <laughs> but no, so it's, it's, it's just been, from, so from the start, it, it's just been this really, you know, saving thing for me, it was a saviour for me, and, and, um, and yeah, the journey's been quite extraordinary. Uh, Brett, before I turn it over to somebody else, um, you talked about working with Jenny, you talked about working with Marta. Tell us about working with Noni. Goodness, where do I start? Um, my first, the only time prior to this I worked with Noni was in a, a TV series that she was, of course, the lead in called City Homicide. I came on as a guest for a couple of episodes. And there's one particular scene where I had to come into her office. She's the, the head sergeant, you know, in the police department, whatever behind the desk and I've got to come in there and I've got to really be assertive and control her and tell her this and tell her that and and it's Noni Hazelhurst and uh, you know goodness me and I I just couldn't I just couldn't make the scene work and she got up from the desk and 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 and, and she's, I, I remember her I can't, I can't remember what the direction was because my director wasn't helping me and she just gave me a couple of pointers of how to how, we, how she thought I could make the scene better because she wanted me to succeed for the sake of the scene. Completely selfless, of course, because she is the, she's playing the character with authority, but I, I just remembered the generosity. It was all about making the scene work. And, um, and of course, then A Place to Call Home comes along and she's, she's that same person. And, and as you know, um, 
and I've said it a, a few times, but anger, I'm not great at, I'm not great at conveying anger. I'm not great at portraying anger. Um, and we, we've obviously had scenes, you know, Elizabeth and George, where there's been a lot of anger. And once again, you know, she'd take me aside and look, have you thought about, and just always just willing to, to help because it's the work. You know, it's about the work with Noni, and 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 that makes it quite selfless, um, and uh, um, generous, but just very good. I mean, just you know, you, you're watching, you're in a scene together, and then you'll you, you you're off screen, you know, feeding lines because she's got the close up, and you just look at what how what she does with every moment. You know, there's not a wasted opportunity on screen she fills every moment with something and that's you know i can i'm not that i'm not simply i'm simply not that good i know i'm not um but but when i'm watching someone like that fill every moment with truth by the way and there's also technique involved but she makes it look completely honest and and um and that to me is the sign of 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 a, of a remarkable actor where you there's just nothing dead there's no dead time you know, you're using every moment you have to convey what, what you need to convey for that character. Um, and, and, you know, all of that aside, Offset, just just so down to worth. And, you know, and you must understand in our country, Noni is, um, she's royalty, you know, literally. Um, her body of work has been extraordinary. And, um, uh, yeah. And uh, I've got to say, I, I've been fortunate enough to see her one-woman um, show called Mother, which is mm -hmm. during, and I think she has a season at the Fabulous uh, Theatre in Sydney. It was written for her. Um, and we saw it last year and just, just remarkable, remarkable work, remarkable. Yeah, I mean, that was tears, you know, tears. It was just beautiful and funny. and um, But no, she's the... As we say, as we would say over here, she's the real deal. We see that. We we see that. Um, Amber, Autumn, got a question for Brett? Yeah, sure. Um, we are actually curious about Sarah and George, without giving away too many spoilers, because <laughs> we love. We actually really enjoy the love story. Um, what can we expect in season five about the development of the of their relationship? And what would you like to see happen in the end? Um, well, I'm, I'm not giving too much away. When, when, when do you, when does five start screening, by the way? Okay, a so it starts, weeks. yeah, it starts in November, uh, or I think November 23rd on Acorn. Um, so that for you, two, for the people in the U.S. Two, episode, two episodes a week. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, well, I'm not giving anything away then. The, the first time we see in the first episode that you'll see, um, we, 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 we're jumping four years. Um, and so we see, a, we see a, a family, you know, we see Sarah and George with their little son, David. Um, and you see a, a family unit as much as they can be. They can't live together, of course, because George is still married to, to Regina. Um, but but you see, a, you, you see stability, which was lovely to play um, after all of, you know, lots of turmoil. And um, so, uh, and, um, and I think for the duration of, of, of season five, um, for George, it's about keeping that family unit together um, and moving it forward. Um, but no, you see, uh, you see a, a couple united. Um, but, you know, it can't be always united, otherwise... As <laughs> well, there, there has to be, there has to be conflict. Be boring, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. uh, um, uh, uh, where, I, where would I like to see it finish? Oh, goodness, I don't want to see it finish. I don't, know, I don't want to see it end. So, um, yeah. keep, the, keep the trip going, I say. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are things like prequels and sequels, which could continue the story for a very long time. Um, yeah. um, Diane, I want to give you a, what would you like, else would you like to ask Brett? 
uh, Brett, I have to tell you that part of the reason that I've seen, uh, got uh, interested in some of your other shows was because Diane, who is a big fan of yours and uh, yes, knows, I know. know, knows a lot about you, she, so she was always mentioning different shows that you'd be on, and so I'm not the only one. Many of us have seen Flying Doctors and seen you and Nicole Kidman together and uh, a lot of your television appearances and a lot of that has to do with Diane's talking about them. Absolutely. Diane was first on board many, 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 many years ago supporting the Flying Doctors and supporting um, I know myself and various other actors from there. You've been incredibly supportive since. I think you know more about what I've done than I do, to be quite honest. Um, <laughs> And that's the truth. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Diane. I'm not always great at expressing that, but uh, I do appreciate it. Go ahead, Diane. Uh, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what to ask anymore. <laughs> All right. Well, I, love what, I love, Diane, I love what you said earlier about the generations that enjoy the yes. show. I think... Um, you know, I think that's one of the lovely things about a place to call home, isn't it? That it, it you know, it's intergenerational. It, it, it's um, the demographics, you know, are, are really quite broad. Um, yeah, so it's, I loved hearing you say that. Um, before Carolyn, I'm going to go to you next. But Brett, can you please tell us what that magnificent piece of art is in back of you? I Obviously, I, it's, it's on purpose. Now, I just thought you might like to see um, uh, some uh, Indigenous art. This is a, um, an artist called Kathy um, Marenka. And um, uh, the piece is called Desert Wildflowers. And, and we fell in love with it. it was, she had a show here. She's a South Australian painter. Um, and she had a show a few years ago now. And, and uh, what I liked about it, it is dot painting, but it's almost got like an impressionist sort of feel to it. A lot of... Uh, dot art, dot painting art uh, can be a little more um, aggressive, for want of a better word, whereas I actually found this is almost like a, a piece of impressionism, and, and I love the colours, and, and I just thought you might like to, you know, I thought it was quite a nice backdrop and, um, uh, you know, a nice segue also into, you know, the current season that we do, we do sort of explore, um, you know, the Indigenous um, uh, uh, acceptance of, of or our lack of acceptance of indigenous uh, people in, in 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 this country back in the 50s and we we, we explore that issue uh through um through an artist so uh i suppose it's a little bit a nice segue to that are you a collector um i i, I wish i had the funds but yeah i do like i've always loved art um and uh we have a few pieces um <laughs> You know, little things that the, the photography, you know, I've got some framed photography everywhere. Um, yeah, I do. I like, I, 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 I'm pretty selective about that. Um, you know, I've always had an interest. I think if I hadn't been an actor, I would love to have been an architect. And um, I, I love all manner of design and, and um, uh, I, I find I find balance in, 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 in being surrounded by, by things that... Um, you know, that, that means something to me, um, uh, aesthetically, you know, it, things are important. I, that, you know, and that's why I love, and I, you know, I'm not just saying this, but that's why I'm also very proud of, of A Place to Call Home because I, 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 I just think visually it's, inc I love the way it looks and, and um, you know, I, I, I love the costumes. I love, yeah, the detail of it really satisfies me. And uh, because that is very important to me. So, you know, whenever I do a role, um, talking about process, costume is, is, is so incredibly important. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I need that to be right before I can, before I can sort of move anywhere else. Um, and I think that's all just got to do with, with having balance around you and, and being appropriate, I think. Um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Carolyn. I, I build things. I, I, I design 
pieces of furniture and and, and I have them built and um, uh, I, I can't I wish I could I'm not gonna touch anything because this is actually an iPad that I've got leaning up against <laughs> something so I'm not gonna but um, no, I, lo I love yeah I love designing stuff and and, and um, yeah it's a, it's a, a bit of a passion Carolyn um. Well, you talked about the, the costumes in the period. Sometimes George is so bundled up with his three-piece suits. And how do you feel about about your wardrobe? I I love my wardrobe. I uh, this is interesting. You know, getting back to our male directors that come on, and there's one 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 in particular, and Mark won't mind me saying this, but he's always trying to get George out of the suits. <laughs> And into the riding gear, you know, into the moleskins and the open neck shirts and the. Um, <laughs> we actually had an argument about one time, but um, I look, I, I like, I like being defined by that. By that, I, I like the consistency of seeing in suits, and um, and I know that we can say a lot, you know, we can suggest a lot by freeing him up and loosening the tie and whatever, and often we do that, and we've probably done that a, a bit more, a bit more in this sort of. Um, in the last season that you're about to see because we see him at home you know we see him you know on on the carpet playing with his son you know playing trains with his son so so we then we put him in in, in knits you know we put him in sleeveless, <laughs> knit, sleeveless knits or jumpers and it's a much softer more family look um but then, you know as long as there's politics there's always room for a a, a navy suit i think <laughs> brett i like you... ties as well i'm very particular about the ties um, do you like clothes in real life? Yeah, I think so. I think that's part of, um, and it's not about money, it's not about pretension. I think it's just, as I say, I think it's about being appropriate. And, and, um, and I mean, I don't think you can be interested in, in design or without, you know, wanting to, 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 to be interested in how you look, um, you know. And as I say, it's got nothing to do with money. Um, that's the great thing when you travel and, and um you know, you go to some cities and the way people just throw things together, it's, um, it, you know, I, I love watching that, you know. I, I, you know, if I travel, I always say, you know, I don't, I, I, we always do the art, the art galleries and whatever, but essentially I, I, I do what I do here anywhere, which is I love sitting in cafes. I love watching people. Um, and you just, you, you hook into the fashion of the, of, of, of the city or, um, and you you know, it influences how you think about things, and, and um, uh, yeah, I, I think that whole the whole world of of, 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 of design and, and 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 fashion is is you know it's not important to everybody, and I'm saying it's not you know it's not a life or death, but 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 I do appreciate it. I do appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Brian, Brian, can you hear? Can you uh, can you ask a question? Yes, um, I know a lot of people have been talking about how George is um, uh, at weak. I think that it's more of a George was naive, and I think that he's becoming more clever and uh, playing the long game. So uh, what do you think about that? Do you think that uh, George is actually a little bit more clever now, less naive? Yeah, I think, you've, you know, you I think you're probably right. Uh, I don't think he had to be clever. I, I, you know, his life prior to meeting Sarah, his life was, you know, it was going along okay. You know, he was, uh, you know, he was on the market. I mean, he, you know, he, he'd lost his wife. He was still grieving for his for his wife, and and and. Um, uh, but you know, family affairs were fine, and the business was fine. You know, the the Bly Empire was doing okay. Um, and uh, so, he, you know, he was he was insulated really from from life's worries and troubles because he could be because that's what wealth can do for you. But it's really only when he let another when he let Sarah into his heart that he opened that heart up that I think he, you know, he started making decisions that um, were based on, you know, from the heart um, and, uh, and whether he's become cleverer. Um, he probably has. But I suppose then that, that implies that, you know, what does clever, does that mean he wasn't clever or? I just, I just don't think he had to, he was protected. <clears throat> and he'd probably been protected. I, I 
is naive is what I think the word is, and then he became wise to the things going on around him. Yeah, I think he, yeah, that's 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 well put. Thank you. I, I, I agree with that. That's that's what's well articulated. Yeah. Uh, Brett, um, the other fabulous woman that you work with is Sarah Weisman Sass. Yes. She's so just so wonderful. Uh, talk to us a little bit about her. Um, yeah, she's dynamic, in fact. Um, it's funny how you, you sometimes find this. I, I have two older sisters, and, and Sass uh, plays my younger sister, I know. But she reminds me of one of my sisters. You know, she um, uh, likes, to, likes to tease a little bit, you know, likes to tease me a little bit, um, and uh, which I just, I take it from her because... I, I just do because I love it. Um, so there really is this lovely brother and sister um, feeling that we, I suppose, once again, did we create it? I don't know if you create that. I think it was just there. Um, it was a lovely piece of casting. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to repeat myself, but once again, just so prepared, just so professional, so about the work. It's, and that's a joy, you know, when when the focus is the work, to make the work better. It's not about the person, it's about what we're doing. Um, and, and Craig, by the way, is exactly the same. And they're, 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 that's why they obviously together, you know, get along so well. Um, and yeah, but just, I, I, I kind of think um, uh, in this show that, that it's like, you know, when, a, when, when you see a fairly ugly man and, and he's got the most beautiful wife and he says that, and the guy says, oh, you're punching above your weight. I, I, um, I think that's the term. Mm -hmm. I, I, in this show, I kind of feel like that. I, I, every, every day it's a challenge just to try and keep up, just to try and, um, and I'm pleased, I'm not asking for compliments, but I, I do feel like that because I'm surrounded by, by just really talented people. <laughs> <laughs> but you kind of just you just hope you can uh, sneak through, really. <laughs> uh, before I have something else I want to ask you, but if you're wondering who the two lovely people in the middle of the screen are who unfortunately do not want to speak, um, that is Kathy Bowles. Um, don't remember the name of the place she lives in Australia, but she has sent me pictures and it's gorgeous. She was one of the very first people to become a member of our group. And uh -huh. she told me a lot about Australia and really kind of started me on this little uh, um, love affair that I embarked on. So that's Kathy who doesn't want to ask a question. And why next not? Year, <laughs> why not? Um, Hello. In it, sitting next to her is her son, David, who is our technical guru, and he is recording this so that we can share it with all of our, our members who are anxiously uh, waiting, to, waiting to hear from you. Well, I'm, I'm glad we have one technical guru. <laughs> <laughs> you could have used his help earlier. I think we all, we, we all could have. Um, uh, thank, well, thanks for looking up to that for us. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, did somebody, did somebody oh, ask something? It's me, Susan. Can you hear me? Ye yes, Hello. yes. Hi, Kathy. I didn't want to ask a question because I couldn't think of anything to ask. I thought everyone else would think of them, think of the ones. And um, we live uh, near Yapoon. Brett, do you know where Yapoon is? Uh, you know? Near Rockhampton. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, Queensland? That's where we live. Yeah. All and, right. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll turn the um, microphone off now because it causes interference. Okay, thank you. Nice to see you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, I think, you know, it, I it mentioned uh, about what Amber and Autumn do. Their, uh, their whole, everything they write about, and they write about with... Um, intelligence and passion it's really a a, a wonderful sight um I'd love there, to, to, I'd thank, love you. To read thank you um i will i will send you the link for sure 
Um, but their their passion is romance. Uh, you know, every everything from Hallmark movies to you know the biggest. You know, they've seen every um, every time that somebody else makes Jane Eyre or Little Women, they are there hanging on every word and telling us all about it, and we love them for it. Uh, uh, hence, so, hence the in Sarah and George. Uh, oh, of course, course, you know, that's, we, yeah, we cover period dramas and uh, romance and romanticism, and, and uh, A Place to Go Home just fits into um, what we cover on our site so well, because we love co covering international shows and spreading the word about them because a lot of people haven't heard about these shows, but amazingly enough, there are so many people looking for shows just like this one, and we try to mm. spread the word as much as we can. So. Yeah, and especially with um, you talking about playing a gentleman, mm -hmm. people are mm -hmm. looking for shows because they're so rare mm -hmm. with characters like that. Oh, for sure. People definitely are for, you know, really good writing that, that doesn't focus back on um, vulgarity, but focuses on really, really great writing, and yeah. people are interested in that for sure. So we appreciate the show. We love the show, and try to spread the word as much as we can. And yeah, and we do cover we cover romance a lot too. So the period dramas and the romance, yeah. Um, Carolyn, um, you you uh, work in uh, my old stomping grounds. You're right in the heart of Hollywood, and you see a lot of media. A lot of television shows, a lot of series. We are inundated with them. Why do you like a place to call home? Why are you so drawn to it? I, I just think it's funny too because a friend of mine, who has kind of, I guess the same similar sensibilities. One of my closest friends who doesn't live near me told me about it, and sometimes I listen to her, sometimes I don't, and I listen to her, and then. Two days later, after a lot of sleepless nights, I finished the whole thing in like two days. I think it's just one of those shows where everything just clicks really well. I think it's got, mm -hmm. obviously the writing, it starts with Bevan Lee, his writing's fantastic. I think the acting is just, the casting is phenomenal and it's addictive. It's just, it, it just works. It, it um, at, at the beginning, I thought it was really predictable, but it's not necessarily predictable. It, it's smart. It's just it's just a great show. It's fun to watch. I, I wish more people did know, know about it. I know it's got a huge following, but I, I I tell a lot of people to watch it. I mean, here in the States, Acorn's like $5 a month, so it's basically a cup of coffee. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just, you know, it's one cup of coffee a month to to watch the show. So, that's, that's my two cents. Um, Brett, if you stop and think about it, 144 countries, I don't even know how many countries there are in the world, but I am told by people who keep track of these things that mm -hmm. it is being seen by somebody in 144 countries. Mm -hmm. I can single out some countries where it's extremely popular. It's extremely mm -hmm. popular in Holland. It's extremely popular in Israel. It's extremely popular in in Britain, you know, the I think uh, other than the Americans, the fastest uh, growing, the fast numbers of members that we have, we're growing at a hundred new members a week. It is phenomenal. More and more people are seeing it, and it's quite extraordinary. But these are people who can't get along about anything. They fight about politics. They fight about who should be allowed to get married. They fight about uh, all no, kinds you, of things. You know Why thing. are they drawn to this show? Universal theme, Susan. Um, uh, the human condition. Um, and we, you know, the thing is, it's 1950, 1950 and look at the world today. You know, it's, we're still fighting over the same things. Um, so that's what makes it relevant. Um, uh, and, and, you know, and I think well-written drama, that's why I, was, I, mean, I get, often get asked, are you surprised that it's resonated internationally? And I think, no, because it, it resonated in our country and it, 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 it sort of devoted itself to entertaining intelligence and, you know, treated the audience with respect. 
and I didn't, I, so it didn't surprise me that, you know, other people of, around the world would, would, would eat, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful and I, I'm, I'm, it's wonderful, but, but it didn't surprise me because well-written drama is like that. It, 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 it attracts intelligence and, and, and it, it treats the audience, as I say, in an intelligent fashion. Um, it's a, you know, it's a truly international production. Um, and those themes that you mentioned, um, as I say, they're relevant in the 50s and they're relevant now. Um, gosh, in our country, right now, you probably know, but you know, we're, we're having a, a vote for the gay marriage and there's a section of our, of our present government, there's a, there's a section of, 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 of it, and they tend to be men of a certain age that are opposing this. They will throw anything at this to try and get a no vote. Um, and it's just astounding in this day and age for me that, that uh, you know, you still have this. And I hope I'm not, I really hope I'm not being disrespectful to anyone else's point of view. Um, oh, um, but, but, I think, well, I no, think no, most no, of us share your view. I am respectful of every, everyone's point of view, but, 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 but not when you're trying to impose a point of view on someone. I think that's when, and that's what's happening in this country. And you kind of think, literally, you would think you're in the 1950s right now. Um, you know, we had some friends from the States visit us recently from California and they they couldn't believe the um, the standard, the level of our public dialogue regarding this issue. It's, 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 it's embarrassing. I mean, and we actually, and, and, and the group that I'm talking about in government, um, you know, they, they, they have flyers that actually have families in front, you know, behind picket fences you know, um, saying this is the world, you know, that we would like, we should still be living like we were back then. It was ba better back then. Um, uh, uh, you know, it, it frustrates me. And yes, there were lovely moments of the 50s without doubt. And that's what we look, that's what we like our show, because I like playing those values and those sensitivities, but also, come on, we can also move ahead. So I think that's what Bevan had in mind too. He wanted to sh highlight the fact, you know, how far have we come, you know? I just mentioned in the in the new season that we we're, we're tackling the indigenous um, issue of acceptance and and goodness me we, we only last week there was a bill that was rejected to give um, the indigenous community their own their own voice uh, their own uh, forum to make decisions uh, for themselves and and it was rejected by our government. Um, goodness me. Uh, uh, can, can you explain um, how this vote works? People had to mail in, but even if there's a majority, Parliament can make it null and void. Is that correct? Um, yes. So we can't even call it a plebiscite because it's it's not compulsory. Well, it's not compulsory to to vote um, as such. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a it's, it, it is through the mail, um, and it's non-binding. However, the current Prime Minister has said that he will adhere to the result, um, but there is this group I'm talking about that they will, they will throw anything, even if it's... A, and at the moment, I think it's polling at about 64%, yes. Um, but they're still throwing in all sorts of issues um, uh, not related to to actual gay marriage, but they're throwing in other issues, uh, how this is going to divide, divide the family, the repercussions for, um, you know, if a priest doesn't want to actually marry two gay people, uh, can he be sued? They're just, they're looking at any issue to cloud what we're talking about, any issue basically to, 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 put, an, to put a stop to it. Um, and of course, we've come, we've come to this point because the government didn't have the courage to do what they're elected to do, which is actually make a decision. That's why we elect these people. And if they know that 64% of the population, and, and poll, there's been polling throughout the past five years saying this is what our country wants, but the Prime Minister didn't have the courage to do it. So these antiquated, the dinosaurs that I'm talking about in his party, pushed for this postal vote knowing that the majority of, young, of the younger generation who are going to be the future voters, those people don't even open a letter. You know, 
this thing could have been done online. It could have had a much wider audience. But they knew that by doing it this way, they may, you know, preclude a certain group of people who are obviously in the vote yes from voting. Now, fortunately, it hasn't turned out that way. In fact, they had record numbers of young people enrolling to vote. And, of course, it will come back to bite them in the future because those very same people that are voting yes for this, for this uh, postal vote are going to be voting no for that government in, in a few years' time. So... Um, but uh, I, I still see that it's a long journey ahead, that's for sure. I hope I've explained that um, in a sort of way. Uh, now I, now I uh, understand it. Um, yeah. You, you s don't feel like you're the only one. Have you heard what's going on in our country? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> oh, who do you mean? <laughs> No yeah. politics, no politics, but yeah, it's uh, it seems to be a pattern in more than one place. Unfortunately, it's happening where I live, so I'm really concerned. Um, uh, Susan, you're you, you're in New York, right? Yes. So uh, I've got to, I've got to pass my um, my thoughts on the, what happened. You know, 24 um, hours ago it was it was devastating. Uh, well, I will tell you that. Um, I know exactly that stretch of the city. It's a place that I frequent off, often um, there, but for the grace of God go I. It could have been another day, and it could have been me. Mm. But this is so, it is so personal. It, any, it is just when it happens in your backyard, when yeah. you go to the city the next day and you see the remnants of this terrible act, terrible, just horrific, horrific thing that happened. Um, it's, uh, I've had, a, I've had a stomach ache since I heard the news. That's how personally uh, I take it. But having said that, my concern is that these things happen so often that maybe we are becoming desensitized to it. Um, you know, they had a big Hollywood, par a big Halloween parade last night and the uh, mayor had the option to cancel it. And, you know, he and the police chief, they all got together and said, no, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to let it stop us. And they, millions mm -hmm. of people watched, watched down, marched down Fifth Avenue. But the fact is that it happened, and every time it happens, we should all be horrified, and we need to um, we need to do something about it. And I think the best thing that we can do is, you know, live uh, positive lives in our own little corner and hope that uh, everybody else follows suit. But it's mm -hmm. a terrible thing to live at a time where people are, so, that we are so hated for something that none of us understand. And as yes. a Jew, when we, you know, the Holocaust is, uh, I'm a fifth generation American, so I didn't experience the Holocaust. However, I am a Jew, and I was the only kid in my 16 student class that didn't have at least one parent who had a a, a, a number a, a concentration camp number so when these kinds of things happen um, mm -hmm. you're right you know what things haven't changed so much since the 50s no. the only thing is now that we have the internet and the world is a smaller a smaller place I didn't mean to go off but you asked about uh you asked yes. about new york um would you mind if I, would you would you mind if i made a comment on, on please you, please do I, I think the worst thing that we can do and what troubled me on our news this morning and and i know everyone's down on trump and whatever but i, I don't want to just hop on that however what i didn't want to see w w was his tweets saying that the system is 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 this is why the system's bad you know the green card thing, we're going to cancel the green, but this is why America, this is why it's bad and this is why I'm here, because I'm going to make it right. And and once again, you've got an administration that sees, that, 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 that gains strength in the negative, 
So it's, there's a negative message there that where, you know, that America is basically stuffed, but he's going to make it okay. And this is the reason it's stuffed, because of that dreadful tragedy. And that's the last thing that you need is to, you know, get political mileage out of this, this type of thing. And, and that just appalled me when I saw that. It's, it's um, you know, um, and, and in a way, the tragedy is appalling, Susan, without a doubt. It's absolutely appalling. And equally, what's bad is that people will use it for political advantage to, 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 to make a statement um, about the state of affairs and how, you know, bring in these measures that, you know, we've been campaigning on. And this is the very reason we need to do it, because look what just happened. And it's just... That's not the way. That's not the way to, to, to approach it. Um, and you know, we, we'll have the same on the far right saying the same thing in this country as well. And, and that's simply not the way to do it. I don't know what the answer is, by the way, but it it isn't that negative approach. Uh, Brett, first, I, w I want to thank you so much on behalf of everybody. We've really, I feel like I've really gotten a chance to know you and, uh, and in turn that will allow me to understand your work even more. Um, I understand why you are such a, so uh, uh, well loved and enjoy your status as a, terrific working actor and we appreciate it um can you say this is a a chance you've got five thousand people who are going to uh want to hear what you have to say to them so could i get you to speak to the group oh um uh, we never take for granted um your support um, and we don't. We feel cherished. We feel lucky. Um, and and um, uh, you know, I always say that it's. It, I, I have so much enjoyment um, from doing something that I love so much. But knowing that people love watching it so much, um, there's just a lovely balance to that. Because I suppose that's that's why we we produce this so that we play want to please people. Um, uh, but no, just gratitude, and, and I just never take it for granted. I mean, I don't take it for granted. Um, so thank you, thank you, and and Susan, I think I've got a, a, a special thank you to you and and um, for 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 what you've done um, over the course of the last few years. It's quite extraordinary when I looked at the figures and the numbers, what you've achieved, and um, thank, you. thank you. Well, uh, thank you, Brett. Thank you for your time tonight. And most of all, thank you for your very, very fine work that we look forward to and enjoy. Thank you so much. It's, we'll it's, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for being present with us uh, um, at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Be well, everybody. Well, thank you, I know. But I didn't mean it. <laughs> it was great. Thank you, Brett. Be well.